this year at Planning Roots, every year we have a theme, but this year at Planning Roots, we are, okay, I am super excited about where the Lord is leading us. Um, we went through 2020, hopefully um, y'all walked with us through that as we talked about growing together, which I thought was super ironic um, that we would end up in um, this virus and quarantine and isolation and all of those things and then racial issues that we walked through this summer that we're still walking through the whole idea of uh, our politics and the division that came with that and the Lord had led planting roots to grow together and I thought well isn't that interesting um, but he taught us a lot in a year and he does that every single time but hopefully as we've walked through this growing together idea we step into this new year and our theme for 2021 hopefully you've seen it on the blog and um, in your newsletter and things like that um, but our theme for 2021 is rise up rise up um, and there are a couple of things that go with that the idea of taking your place at the wall the idea of awakening the leader in you the idea of um, having the courage to take the next step to do the next thing um, so we are so very excited um, because this idea of rise up is important. Now, our verse for this year is actually out of Nehemiah. And so you'll see that we spend a lot of time in Nehemiah this year and the Bible study that will come out in just a few weeks, super excited, um, is a study on Nehemiah and it is called Rise Up, Awaken the Leader in You. And so we are really excited, but we're going to spend a lot of time in Nehemiah. I don't know if you know about Nehemiah or if you don't, um, but our key verse for this year is actually um, Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 18. And it says, I told them how the gracious hand of my God had been on me and what the king had said to me. They said, let us rise up and build. And their hands were strengthened to do this good work. And that is where we believe the Lord is leading us as military women and wives in this new year. Now, a little background, if you don't know Nehemiah, if you don't know who he is, um, he was a Jew. He was part of the nation of Israel and he, um, God's chosen people, they had been exiled. And so he was actually cut bare to a king, um, exiled away from his homeland. And in all of this the king had allowed the people to start going back to the homeland and so nehemiah probably assumed that as people went back they were rebuilding the city of jerusalem which means they were rebuilding the wall um, what he found out was that that was not the case and when he found out that the walls of jerusalem were still not rebuilt um, it grieved him so much that the king because he was cut bare to the king, this uh, pagan king actually saw the distress and saw the heartache that um, was in Nehemiah and gave him the opportunity to go back to Jerusalem to help the people build this wall. Now, in uh, we get this as military women and wives that um, this idea of the wall around the city was super important. And in, in Nehemiah's day, the security of the wall, the um, status of the wall was um, how cities, it, it determined whether cities lived or died, whether they survived or whether they didn't. The wall became vitally important, both for protection and for community. It's where things happened, right? Inside the wall, people would come in the gate and they would, this is where they would trade, this is where they would worship. All of these things took place inside the wall but this wall also provided them protection. So it provided those two things. Um, and as military women and wives, we get it because we, I, um, I shared that I've lived in a gated community, not the big fancy house kind, but the kind of a gated community where all the houses or stairwells pretty much look the same. Uh, there's a lot of similarities there, builder basic kind of ideas because I live, I have lived on a military installation, which many of you have as well. So um, for a fun question for today is, are you an on post or on base post, off base post, or are you a mix of the two? Because I know a lot of us have preferences, whether we want to live on the installation or off the installation, or whether it's just kind of a luck of the draw and what's available. So I would love to know uh, which is your preferred place of living. 
for the seasons where you have been. And you may have differences based on location or job or different things like that. But anyway, I would love to know because we are actually going to talk a lot this year about the importance of that wall um, and what that looked like for um, the people of Jerusalem. And as Nehemiah went back, if you haven't read the whole story, I'm going to tell you the ending because it's super cool. But G Nehemiah went back and here in chapter two, where we are reading today, it actually is the place where he says, he tells the story of what God has already done, right? And um, that this pagan king had noticed uh, his distress had given them the opportunity to come back. In addition to just coming back, he provided him with a security force. He provided him with the resources that he needed to build the wall. He provided it, but he just gave him all this stuff, right? And so when um, Nehemiah showed up and he told them the story of what God had done, it built courage, it encouraged, grew courage in um in the people of Jerusalem and they said, let us rise up and build. Let's do this together. And they did. There was some opposition and, and they got discouraged and it was hard and all of the things, right? Because we totally get that. But they ended up building this wall, rebuilding this wall in 52 days. Now, it wasn't like a nice little chain link fence out in the backyard, right? This was like a, a thick rock wall and in addition to building the wall they had to clear the rubble as well because the the wall there used to be a wall right and it was in um disarray it was just totally crumbling in places because of the the multiple sieges that had been upon it from their enemies right and so it was not only a big pile of rubble but they so they had to clear that and then they had to build the wall and they did it all in 52 days which is just miraculous, right? And so um, if you get to the end of Nehemiah, you see where they um, they dedicate themselves again to the to the work of the Lord and, and what he and their obedience to him. But what I want us to see today is this idea of when Nehemiah told them his story, okay, that's the first part. The second part of it was they said, let us rise up and build. And my second question to you today is, do you have a word, a theme, or a direction that the Lord is leading you in this new year? Um, and if you would be willing to share that with us, I would love for you to do that. Um, where's the Lord leading you in this new year? So uh, I tell you that because what I want us to see in this verse, let me read it one more time. Nehemiah chapter two, verse 18 it says, I told them, and this is Nehemiah talking, I told them how the gracious hand of my God had been on me and what the king had said to me. And they said, let us rise up and build. And their hands were strengthened to do the good work. So they said, let us rise up and build. So there are two parts of that I want us to hear today. Number one, um, Nehemiah told them the story of what God had already done. In telling the story, and telling the story that God of what God had done in his life and his most recent experience and what the Lord had already done, he, he grew courage and he encouraged the people that he was talking to. So that's my first piece. As we rise up this year at Planting Roots, I want you to tell your story. Your story is a piece of God's story. He is writing a story in you. And when we share of God's faithfulness, when we share of what God has already done, when we tell the story of, of the Lord's work in our life, we grow courage in each other. So I want to challenge you to share your story. You don't have to share all of it. You don't have to do it on social media and throw it out there, but God will bring people across your path that you will encounter, that your story will speak into. It will, it will be a piece of your story, will be exactly what they need in that moment, in that time to grow courage in them. Um, and sometimes we sit back and we think, well, I don't really have a story. I don't really have, um, you know, it's really not that impactful. It's really not, you know, it seems pretty ordinary because it's the one that we live, right? But I will challenge you to tell your story. Tell the story that God is writing in you. Tell what the Lord has done. Tell of his faithfulness. Tell of his goodness. Tell of the challenges that you've walked through and what the Lord did in the midst of those. Tell the story. Tell the story that the Lord is writing in you. So that is my first 
part to this. The second part today and is telling our story, but then they said, let us rise up and build. And that was a people's response to Nehemiah's story. Their response of, you've grown courage in us and we're going to we're going to do this. We are going to accomplish these great things. And it didn't mean that from that moment on, there was no struggle. There was no challenge. It's not like they thought, well, it's just going to build itself. It's going to be a super easy thing. They knew it was going to take work. They knew it was going to be hard. They knew that it wasn't going to be without its challenges, just like we do. But they said, let us rise up and build. The let us is important. The people did not respond with, oh, I will build. I will do it. I will whatever, right? That's not how they responded. They responded collectively that said, let us rise up and build. Let us, because they knew they needed each other. There is not one person in that group that could have rebuilt that wall. There is not one by themselves, right? There is not one person who could protect that wall. And if you see later um, in these scriptures where they started to get opposition, um, Nehemiah actually stationed them in clans or families in different places around the wall where they were most vulnerable, which there is like a million analogies in there for our military life, right? But, um, but what I want you to hear is that there is not one person who could have defended that city alone and not one person who could have built that wall alone. They needed each other. They had to do it together. Um, and that is what the Lord is reminding us of. As we talk about rising up this year, he is not calling Corey Yates, right, to rise up and just do it myself. I know there's a huge mission field in our military culture. I know that God has purposes and plans for me in the place where I am. I know all of these things, but God did not make me to fix it all. He did not make me to be the answer to it all. He did not make me to do it all right? He made us as a community to do it together. It's called Big C Church, and we're just a small piece of it as Christian military women and wives. But let me encourage you, as we talk this year about rising up, and you will hear this over and over and over this year, as we talk about everything from finances to friendships and everything in between, uh, we're going to talk a lot about rising up. We're going to talk a lot about Nehemiah, um, and how important it is to bring protection and community, how important that wall was. Um, and I say protection, and we do fight a battle against um, the, the rulers of darkness, right? This is a battle that we fight. There is an enemy um, that comes against us, and so we have to fight against things like isolation and depression and fear and anxiety and post-traumatic stress and suicidal thought. I mean, y'all are with me. We have these battles in our marriages, in our families, in our communities, and as military women and wives, we have to stand up and say, not on my watch. Not on my watch are we going to wrestle with those things. Not on my watch is that are we going to succumb to that? Is that going to overcome us? Because as a community, as a group of Christian military women and wives, we can stand and build that community and we can build, rebuild that wall of protection. That wall is vitally important. And what I want you to hear today is two things. Number one, telling your story builds courage in each other. So tell the story that God is writing in you. And number two, I want you to realize that this is not a story. Um, this is not a job. We're not rising up all by ourselves. We are doing this together. We need each other just like they did in Jerusalem. They needed each other at places on the wall. They needed each other to build the wall. We need each other too. So as we rise up this year, I want to challenge you. What is God asking of you? What is that next thing? Whether it's he's He's asking you to rise up and, and stay home and invest in your family and your four walls. Maybe he's asking you to speak words of hope and life and truth into people um, that you work with on a regular basis. Um, maybe he's asking you to, to take on that individual tasker or um, take on that deployment and, um, with courage and hope realizing the, the mission field that the Lord is sending you to and not simply the things that you're leaving behind. Um, maybe he's asking you to homeschool your children or to invest in them in a different way. Maybe he's asking you to rise up and fight for your marriage because it's not what you thought it was going to be. And it's stinking hard. 
Maybe he's asking you to rise up and trust him in your health or the health of those that you love. He could be asking you to do a million things, to open your home for, for Bible study, to invest in your local community, to serve your neighbor, to love your children, to, to fight for your marriage, to go on a deployment um, realizing that it is, it is an assignment from God much more than it's assignment from any branch of the service where you come from. He could asking, be asking you to do a million things. And what I am challenging you to today is to rise up and be obedient in that. Tell the story of what God is writing in you and because it grows courage. We grow courage in each other through that. Um, but realize that we are doing this together. We are all rising up and saying, I'm here. I'm signing up. I'm in for the long haul. Wherever the Lord sends, whatever the Lord asks, I'm in it. Wholeheartedly, I'm in. Um, because we're in it together. And I will tell you, as we talk about Nehemiah and we talk about them rebuilding the wall, he does. He stations them in clans or families and in more vulnerable parts of the wall. And where you and your family are stationed today is no surprise to the Lord. There is a purpose and a plan for the place where you are. So as we talk this year, um, y'all can pop over to the Monday Minute yesterday. I get into a little bit more detail about because it we introduce our theme um, for this year. So you can read a little bit more about this Rise Up idea. You can hear it on the, the podcast as it comes out tomorrow. You can show up on Thursday and um, as our prayer team prays through these things, and they would be happy to pray for you, to pray with you um, as we rise up together, um, not individually, not on our own. But um, together, we can make a difference around the globe for the work of the kingdom, for the work of the Lord Jesus. The Lord is calling us to do a mighty work. And as we come out of 2020, there are many blessings of that and many challenges. But what he has done is he's grown us to be prepared to do what he's called us to do in 2021. What does that look like for you? And remembering that it is not you by yourself that God is expecting to build this wall, to, to build this community, to, um, to build this protection, to do those things. Um, it is not you alone. It is us together as a community. And so this year, my challenge for us all is to rise up, stand up with courage and say, wherever you send, whatever you ask, Lord, I'm in. Bible study comes out in a few weeks um, called uh, Rise Up, Awaken the Leader in You, um, and it applies to all of you. Uh, so don't think, well, I'm not really a leader. Well, um, I would have to disagree with that um, because we all are in some way, shape, or form, and you too have a place at the wall. So join us this year. Share with your friends. Look for events coming this spring. We're going to rise up. Um, and do what the Lord has called us to do in the places where we are. And truly, together, we will impact a globe for Christ.